Assalamualaikum, brothers and sisters. How are you? Okay. Just adjusting everything. Starting up my Instagram. Okay, I think we're live, not sure. Okay. How is everybody? Where are you chatting from today? I am in the United States. Hopefully my Instagram is working. So I'm trying to go live on YouTube and Instagram today. Uh, I can't tell if I'm on live with Instagram or not because they keep changing things around. Welcome, welcome. I'm not going to be on as long as I usually am. I'll probably be on for about 30 minutes today. If anybody has any questions, uh, you can ask them now before I get busy chatting because sometimes I talk for a long time and I don't see my uh, text. Just trying to log into Instagram too. Okay. All right. Anyway, I don't know if Instagram's working or not, so we'll just do YouTube. Salam alaikum, Zayed. Where are you chatting from today? I'm doing well, doing well. We're getting into the middle of winter out here in the Dakotas. Assalamu alaikum, fundraiser. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, we're doing okay out here. Um, there's not a lot of COVID cases out here, alhamdulillah. So it's not, uh, too much worry out in this part of the country. I am going to be talking about hope for the future today. So I kind of wanted to talk about big corporations and, you know, big tech, big pharma, all of that, the political problems that we're seeing across the world right now. Um, so one of the things I wanted to explain to people are, uh, is, I should say, getting away from big corporations and giving them less power, we can um, try to do more things for ourselves. For example, cooking our own food, using healthy organic ingredients, not buying so much processed food, not using the grocery stores as much. Because if we take the power of the dollar away from them, then they lose some of their power, right? So it's just about making that decision to change your lifestyle. And it's kind of a slow process, right? Because we've all been kind of indoctrinated by 
media, television commercials, you know, all of that stuff. The way we've been taught in school, we've learned from our parents because they had to go through the same thing, right? So we think, oh, we go to the grocery store once a week, we fill up our cart, we don't really look at the ingredients. Maybe we try to save money, buy some things on sale that are cheaper. But realistically, if you want to save money and you want to take power away from the corporations, then you have to start creating some of your own food, if not all of your own food. Well, alaikum salam, tick and tack. I don't think my Instagram is working. It doesn't look like it is. Probably blocking me. I've been putting a lot of political stuff on, on there lately. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> a little too much for their taste, I'm sure. Anyway, uh, here's another thing, right? If you want to use money to invest or to save for a business, even a small business, where you can buy some inventory, making your own food can help you accomplish that because you can save so much money. For example, let's say that you spend, I don't know, $10 a week on bread. If you make your own bread, you save about $8 to $9 a week, right? Let's say that you buy salad, lettuce, greens, and you spend about, I don't know, $10, $15 a week. If you grow your own indoors with hydroponics and sprouting, you'll save $10 to $12 a week, right? That all adds up. Um, for example, let's say you go to the market and you buy fish all the time. Why not go out on a fishing trip with your buddies? Go out fishing. Get a whole bunch of fish. Bring it home. Freeze it. Dry it. Smoke it. Right? I mean, and women, you can grow things indoors or outdoors, no matter where in the world you are. You can grow some of your own food. Right? So just thinking about how you can be more self-sufficient how you can save your own money for yourselves, take that money away from the corporations and have your own food in the home, right? Another thing is preparing for future events, current and future events. We all see that things are not getting better. They're just not, they're not getting any better. They're just getting worse. The economy is crashing all over the world. They are prohibiting people from living their normal lives all over the world. Um, farmland is being either bought up or regulations are being changed so the farmers are having to fight for their rights, right? That's your food supply, folks. So start thinking about that. I know it's hard to imagine not having enough food in the grocery stores because it looks like there's food there right now. But you have to be realistic, right? If things are not getting better and farmers are having to fight for their land, what is going on with this Instagram? Hold on, you guys. I'm going to try to restart it. All right. So now I'm live. Salam alaikum, everybody. Sorry about that. I don't know what Instagram was doing, but apparently I couldn't get on before. Anyway, so be realistic, you guys. Start making your own food, storing your own food, reading labels. Salam alaikum, Kurt and Tick and Tack. Sorry, I thought it was live before, but it wasn't working properly, so I just had to restart it. That's the number one thing, you guys. Also, you need to have something to warm your homes, to be able to cook with if there's no electricity, to have light, right? 
candles, kerosene, oil, wood, being realistic, preparing for, you know, possibly worse times. As I was telling my YouTubers, things are not getting better. They're not getting better anywhere in the world. They're just getting worse. So you have to, you know, do a little brainstorming, do some planning, right? Yeah, start preparing your own food. Grow food in your own home. Grow it in your yard. Grow it in your grandparents' yard, wherever you can find a place. Um, start reading labels so that you're not buying things that could possibly hurt your health, right? While I come salon, eat more flora and learn Arabic. Does anybody have a question? I'm willing to answer questions. Uh, like I said before too, um, it's a good idea to have things in your home that can provide heat, the source to cook on, light. If there's blackout, we all know what just happened to Pakistan and Italy. They had an unexpected extended blackout. And this is being predicted in other areas in the world, okay? How is the lockdown going at your end? Well, we don't have a lockdown. There may be some um, extra restrictions in the state of New York. But basically, there's no real lockdown. They have closed a lot of businesses, smaller businesses. But of course, they've kept the larger corporations open, right? Um, there is a mask requirement in my state if you're going shopping or you're going to use public transportation. Well, I can salam none. And in UK, thinking of getting a generator as a backup here in UK. That's a good idea. It really is. Um, just think about how you can use that long term. So someone wants to go live with me, so I just clicked on that. So I'm, I let you go in live. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, backup generator, wood stove, kerosene, heat, candles. Okay, I can see your camera. You're on. While I come salam. What part of the world are you? Where are you in the world? Oh, you're in the UK, right? Are you in the UK? Okay. I cannot hear you very well, but I can see you. Welcome. I can't hear you. No. And I have the volume all the way up to I have the volume all the way up to high. I can hear you a little bit. <laughs> a little bit, not much. Uh, I don't speak Arabic, no. I just pray in Arabic, and I know some polite words in Arabic for good manners. That's it. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh huh. There aren't any around here, unfortunately. Uh, so my Instagram, one of my Instagram members, was talking about how I need a husband. Where, actually, I have been looking for one, but we're. In a pandemic, travel is just about impossible. And, uh, you know, it needs to be somebody that's uh, reachable. 
right? <laughs> Can't travel right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's difficult. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's really not about people's health. It was if it was about caring about people's health, they wouldn't be shutting everything down and causing mass suicides and mental health issues and putting people out of business so they can't work and causing all of these problems. That's not a, a government that cares about people's health that does that. Assalamu alaikum. Sore and Muhammad. I wish I could hear you, but I really can't. There's there's not much volume coming in. Okay. All right. Assalam. Okay. Bye. I got it. So I had to uh, take my guest off of there because I couldn't hear him. So, oh Allah, grant those who don't have spouses, spouses. Amin. So I do have a marriage website, you guys. And the address for that is patreon.com slash Muslima of the West. So if you are looking for a spouse, this is a very small website, okay? It's very low key. I just put it together myself. There are about six or seven women that are looking for husbands. Most of them are from the US, but we do have, there's probably two or three that are Asian. I think there's one woman from India and one from Pakistan. They are looking for husbands and they are inside my website. Their contact information is inside my website. If you are a lady, a sister looking for a husband, please contact me because I have about 27 men that are very wonderful, educated, have nice jobs, handsome, waiting for brides, okay? They're too young for me, sorry. <laughs> But if you're looking for a husband, go to my singles website, okay? Ladies, please. Uh, it's patreon.com slash Muslima of the West, okay? Patreon.com slash Muslima of the West. And you can find the link in my bio. If you're on YouTube, you can find the link at the upper right-hand corner of the page, up at the top, okay? Assalamu alaikum, Ishmael and Platicek. And um, Syed is asking me, are you interested in exchanging language? If I had the time, <clears throat> I probably would, but at the moment, I do a lot of religious studies. I am writing my second book. I am running a shop online. I'm running a marriage site online. I'm running my YouTube channel where I have to create and edit and post videos. Um, and I also work with people online, one-to-one, uh, -one, doing things like um, teaching them things, consultation, that kind of thing. Thank you for the offer to teach me Arabic. If I had time to do it, I would. Um, K.A. says, why can't hear you? I don't know. I think there's some sort of problem with the audio because, um, yeah, I think maybe it's your audio, K-A-R, because I couldn't hear you either. Assalamu alaikum, uh, Amatula. May Allah bless you too. Thanks for stopping by. 
Nice to see you in here again. Thanks for all the hearts, Abdullah. Abdul Hadi. Abdul Hadi. Appreciate that. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about hope for the future, too. So I think we do have a lot of hope for the future, but we have to be clever about it. We have to be strategic. We have to protect ourselves. We have to band together with other people that are righteous and truthful and fighting for a better world, right? We have to be living more sustainable lifestyles and we need to be um, going backward in time rather than forward. For example, eating organic food, growing our own food, trying to help make our own clothes, um, learning things like sewing, building. Assalamu alaikum, Ahmed. Thank you, Amatula. Amatula says she likes my niqab. Okay, so yeah, kind of going backward in time, relearning things. And luckily for us, with the internet, we can learn just about anything we want to for free, right? It's easy to relearn how to cook healthier, how to grow our own food in our homes or our yards, how to sew, how to knit, how to crochet, how to do electrician, electrician stuff, how to repair your home, how to fix your car, all of that, right? Assalamu alaikum, Abdu and MMM. We pray for Allah to bless you and all your loved ones. Well, thank you. I hope that Allah blesses all of you too and all of your loved ones. And MMM, I'm sorry, I don't read Arabic. The only word I know for sure in Arabic is Allah, and I can see that in your sentence. <laughs> So that's a, that's a nice word, okay? Oh, I was going to say, try to protect yourselves by getting rid of dangerous uh, social media programs if possible. For example, I don't know if you've all heard, but Facebook has gone completely overboard in invasive spyware into your phones and your computers, and they've got their hooks in a lot of different websites and programs so that they can collect your data, they can listen in on your phones, they can look through your camera at any time without lighting up the light, okay? So if it looks like your camera's off, it may not be off. So that's just a good thing to keep an eye on, okay? Keep an eye on that. Now they're selling little caps that you can put over your cameras on your phones and your computers. Assalamu alaikum, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome Omatula and everyone else whose name is in Arabic that I cannot pronounce. <laughs> Okay, back to talking about invasive spyware on our computers and phones. So they've gotten to a point where they force it on you, whether you like it or not, or you can't use the internet for information, you can't use your machines properly, right? Assalamu alaikum, Azmin Zura and Adadas Yosef. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name very well. So if you have a Twitter account and you don't really, really need it, uh, I would suggest you delete it. If you have a Facebook account, that's the most dangerous one right now next to Google. I would suggest that you go in there and you collect all of your photographs and your videos and delete it. Okay, that's just my suggestion. You don't have to take it. But I'm going to tell you right now that 
You know, if you keep Facebook, all of your data, your banking information, your passwords, your photos, your every message you send through chat is being recorded and kept and a lot of it being sold, okay? Just so you know. And if any of you have daughters and wives at home with phones and you don't want men at Facebook looking at your wives, I suggest you do something about it, you know, because you don't know when they're looking in on the camera and listening in, okay? And they absolutely are doing that. You can check it out for yourselves. Look through any search engine to find this information. Look through YouTube, you'll find it. And they make it very, very difficult to get off of Facebook and to shut those things down, almost impossible. So you'll have to look for video tutorials that show you step-by-step step how to get into Facebook and shut those things down, okay? Uh, what about new... What's, what about new what? K-A-R-A, -A, your text is mixed in with another person's. So I can't see it. You're having some serious phone problems. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm really kidding, everyone that just joined. Uh, okay, oh, you're following from Egypt. Well, welcome. Welcome. Your name is Shrook. Welcome, Shrook. What is your suggestion? That is my suggestion. My suggestion is to take all of your stuff off of Facebook and get rid of that. But you'll have to be very careful about that. You can't just delete it. They keep everything active on your computer and your phones, even if you delete Facebook. So you're going to have to get tutorials and go in and go through all the steps and take some time and make sure those are all turned off so they don't have access to your camera and your microphone and your data, right? Your text messages, your photographs, your passwords, your banking information. They have all of it, all of it. If you have a Facebook account, you know, <laughs> That's a serious problem. I myself am still trying to get rid of mine because I had my Facebook account opened. Uh, it was 2008, I think. So when I went in to grab all my photos, there was like over 5,000 photos. I've only saved 1,800 so far, but as soon as I get to the last photograph, I will be going through the steps to get rid of that Facebook account permanently. MM says, I don't know English, but I'm hoping to you Allah with you. Uh, what about working with Nikab as a doctor in America? No doc, no hospital or organization in America will ever, I shouldn't say ever, I mean, I don't know of any that would hire anybody wearing Nikab. I don't know of anyone that has a job that's wearing a niqab. It's really hard to even get a job wearing hijab, let alone niqab here. It's very um, problematic because people have been taught in this country through media and education system to fear um, Islamic anything. like. They don't talk about Quran. They don't talk about Islam. If people dress Islamic and they're outside of an, uh, you know, a specific Islamic community, um, then it's it can be dangerous. You know, scary. Uh, hi, good salam. Salam alaikum. Said Malu. Uh, Allah protect you and your family and all Muslims. 
Shokran, thank you. I'm sorry if I change because I speak very little English. You are fantastic. I hope everything goes well for you. Thank you, you too. Uh, what's up app? Oh, what's up app? <laughs> I deleted my what's up app. You, you know, what's up is owned by Facebook. And many people have left there quickly. If you need to use an app that's like WhatsApp, that gives you the phone privacy and the encryption and the availability to do video calls, audio calls, photographs, all of that, then I would suggest right now using Telegram. That's the only other option I can think of that might be similar. There's also Safe Chat. You can check Safe Chat. And if you want a social media platform that's similar to Facebook, then I suggest you take a look at Gab. That's gab.com. There was Parler, but Amazon, Google, and Facebook got together and destroyed Parler because Parler refused to get on board and start censoring people. So they attacked Parler and they took them down, right? You know what means Zuckerberg in Arabic? No, what means Zuckerberg in Arabic? <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, uh, Nikab, uh, IUK. You guys, I really, I, I really just wanted to tell you, be really careful with social media. Get rid of the big social media platforms if you can comfortably. Um, you know, don't give them any power if you don't need to. Move over to other platforms that are safer and keep your privacy and don't collect your data and spy on you and your families. And try to eat healthier food. Stop buying food from the big corporations, and that way you're taking their power away from them, okay? L bird, it's cold. That's what Zuckerberg means, L bird, it's cold. <laughs> okay. Assalamu uh, alaikum, Yosef, Yosef, how are you? I hope I didn't miss anybody. If I did, I apologize. Sometimes the chat just moves around quickly. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, Osman Zuria and Atman. Oh, Zuck, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so yeah, going back to um, being prepared, right? Start storing food, you guys. I'm serious. Think about this. Nothing's getting better. Everything's getting worse, right? There are more lockdowns happening, more enforcement happening, crazy stuff happening all over the world, right? Farmers are being attacked. Their land's being taken. They're being regulated. They're going on strike in different areas. You know, they're closing down borders more, even within countries. Come on, use, use your minds. Get the food and store it. Start finding ways to grow food or collect food without using the grocery stores. And this will save you money as well, right? Because you're not going to be giving money or as much money to the big corporations, right? You're taking their power away from them. You're making yourselves healthier and more sustainable. And, you know, what can you do with the money that you save? Think about that. What could you do with the money that you saved that you didn't give to these big corporations? Right? How could you save 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, $100 a week 
by changing your lifestyle up a little bit and being healthier, you could save a lot of money fast. And if you wanted to, you could do something with that money. You can invest it. If you wanted to do stocks and bonds, you could do that. I personally don't trust that either, but, you know, some people like to do that. You could invest in inventory and start a small business from your home, right? You can do a lot of things, you guys. Think about it. Give the power back to yourselves. Uh, it's thinking just of positive things will always make you feel strength. Mashallah, you are a good mother. Thank you. Yeah, think positive. Always think positive. Don't ever think that you have no power just because you're one person, okay? It only takes one person. Martin Luther King was one person. Hitler was one person, right? You know, Gandhi was one person. Jesus was one person. Zuckerberg is one person. It only takes one to change things. The difference is knowing that you have power, making the decision, and acting on that decision, right? Um, I'm tick and tack. I'm not going to do a um, split video right now, okay? <laughs> it's too hard because I'm trying to do, um, I'm trying to talk on two platforms at the same time. And it didn't work out very well the first time when I did a split video. Welcome. Welcome. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Salam alaikum. Oh, I can't pronounce that. What can negative thinking affect? Okay. So negative thinking can affect a lot of things, right? Negative thinking is negative energy that goes out, right? And it also prevents you from being able to accomplish things um, that you might have been able to accomplish if you had a positive outlook, right? Uh, it can also affect other people around you. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Oh, I read that. <laughs> what about the marriage website? Is it started? Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a person. That's right. One person. It only takes one person. And everybody has equal power within themselves. It's just a matter of acknowledging that you have power, acknowledging that you can make the decision, and moving yourself to do the actions, right? The marriage site is uh, patreon.com slash Muslima of the West. And you can find the icon for that. Excuse me. You can find the icon for that in my bio at Instagram or in one of the descriptions on my videos or up at the top right hand corner of my page on YouTube. Um, by God Almighty, I want to marry you. I am a man. I fear God. Please contact me. <laughs> well, let me just say something about that. Okay, so yes, I am looking for a husband. However, okay, you guys, I am looking for a husband around my own age that is closely, you know, compatible in education that has the ability to be able to travel as I do and the ability to also take care of me if I feel like it. <laughs> I do a lot of stuff on my own, so I may not want that. But if I want to, then that's my choice if I have a husband. So, And that person also has to have the ability to have access to be able to get to know me. And that is, online doesn't work. I'm sorry, it just doesn't. 
And I, I don't want to do a long distance sort of relationship where I'm talking to somebody online or texting every day. That's not a marriage. And I can't get to know somebody properly without being in their physical presence. Okay. So this is a big issue. I, I know you guys, you know, like me a lot. And I appreciate that. And I'm flattered by that. But it has to be somebody that's compatible, that has access to me, that, you know, has a, a compatible education level, is near my own age, or it isn't going to work. It just isn't. I mean, I know those are a lot of qualifications that need to be met, but that's just how it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> really. I mean, all of you are wonderful, wonderful people. And, you know, there's so many wonderful women out there. You're going to find somebody great. I just have to have the right person for me. You know, I need someone my own age that I can get to, that can get to me, be in my physical presence, you know, have conversations with me that are, you know, compatible, right? If we're on the same level with education and life, then we understand certain things that other people might not understand if they're 20 years younger than us, right? Or, you know, if I have a PhD education and I'm talking to somebody that has a high school education, how can we really be compatible? It's not that we're not equal in humanity, it's just that we're at different places in our lives. That's all. Okay. Uh, you're not looking. We already done. <laughs> Is it the same live on Instagram and YouTube? Yes. By God Almighty. Oh, I read that already. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Do you want to tell us about your qualifications? Yeah, I just did. Oh, you mean my credentials? Is that what you're talking about? Um, there is no more travel in Corona time. Well, yeah, see, I'm not willing to do an online long distance chat on text and phone and audio with anybody for the next year or two. So if somebody needs to be in my country to be able to get to know me or when I start traveling again outside of the country, they would need to be there somewhere, right? So, and there are countries that I have no interest in visiting, especially with things that are going on in them at this moment in time, right? So... You know, let's be realistic, be realistic, logical. Um, somebody's from Morocco. A O A. Oh, hi, Cher Ali. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Seven Ejaz. Ejazi Q07. And the others, I can't pronounce your names. Seek facts, not fiction. Halal has become very difficult at this time. Well, yeah, you guys, I do have a marriage site. You can go take a look in there if you want to. There are like six or seven ladies in there that are looking for husbands. And they're yet they're young. Okay, they're in their 20s and 30s. <laughs> All right. And my website for the marriage site is patreon.com slash Muslima of the West. And you can find that link in my bio or in a description under a video or at the upper right hand corner of my page. Assalam alaikum sister. It's Hijazi. Oh Hijazi. Oh okay. Uh Cheryl Lee older than you. 
I don't, it doesn't have, the person doesn't have to be older than me, but I want them to be relatively uh, close in age to myself, right? Like I would accept somebody that was even 10 years younger than me, maybe. Five years is better. Uh, the same age is perfect. A little bit older would be okay. But, you know, it's important because it can't just be about, you know, you like how I talk or you like the clothes I wear on camera or, you know, things like that. There's more to a relationship and more to life, right? There's a whole background behind each person, a whole culture, education, lifestyles, you know, growing up in different eras, you know, causes different uh, ideologies and things like that, right? Assalamu alaikum, Rasha. Welcome. I'm sure Egypt is, uh, well, hopefully they're doing okay. Um, I know there's lockdowns and protests all over the place, but um, Egypt is actually one area in the Middle East that I haven't been to yet that I'd like to see. <laughs> Welcome, Mawaya, Bashir, and Ruchira Aravindu. Okay. I have a hard time pronouncing some of these names. All right, does anybody have any questions about uh, hope for the future? As far as food, energy, business, finance, all that kind of thing. Um, one of the other things I, I kind of advise people to do is to try and have more social interaction with each other because it's very damaging to your mental health to be alone all the time or be fearful of others, right? You can certainly have good hygiene and keep a little bit of a distance and wear a mask or not, but I think it's not healthy to fear other people and to isolate yourselves um, and to not do regular activities that you used to do. So maybe you can all make sure that you have like a small, at least a small friend group that, you know, are good about keeping good hygiene and maybe limiting their presence in large crowds and just Figure out what kind of activities you can do together. Go fishing, start a garden, uh, do woodworking, and get together and plan out opening up a business, something like that. Uh, Yosef, Yosef, do you have a question? <laughs> I see you waving. Oh, you're leaving. Okay. Bye, have a good night. See you later. Planting the yard is also a good suggestion. Yeah. Why well, have all that wasted land, wasted space? Even if it's a small area, what are you doing with it? Is it just sitting there doing nothing? Go out there and till it up and plant some seeds and water it. Make it do something for yourselves. You are an ambitious woman. Yeah, just my nature. I always have some ideas going on all the time. All kinds of projects. <laughs> That's just how I am. Uh, sorry, I have no idea about the idea of the marriage website you just talked about <clears throat> and how it works. Could you explain it a little bit? So I have a page um, it's just a small website that I put together because people are having a hard time uh, finding a spouse. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. Uh, Salam alaikum, Papa the game. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so the website has people on there. If you want to be listed, you can email me. Um, so you email me your photos, a little bit about you, what kind of wife or husband you're looking for, and I post it on my website. Now, with the contact information and everything, that's on the inside of the website, so you have to pay to get in there, right? Because that way I know that you're a real person, there's no monkey business, you know, nobody can hurt anybody else or lie because I can see who's in there, you know. Uh, plus, I want to get some money for my time as well, right? So you can get in there and you can contact people for potential spouse, right? Uh, if you're a woman, I'll put you in for free. Um, if you're having a difficult time getting in, we can arrange something. I know somebody just yesterday, no, two days ago, tried to pay to get in and, and they were not able to because I think it was the area of the world. They were having trouble with their card. So actually, I contacted Patreon about that and I'm waiting to hear back from them. Um, but I will help you if you, you know, I'm not that rigid either. Like, if you just can't get in to pay, but you can't afford to support a wife, I don't have a problem helping you get contacted, okay? I also have women that are not listed in there that want me to find them husbands. I have two of those right now, so I am trying to help them. Uh, locate a husband, but I told them from the beginning I'm pretty busy, you know, so I'll do what I can. Anyway, Assalamu alaikum, as uh, Jazz Kadarshi. <laughs> Some of these names are hard to pronounce. Sorry about that. Is this website for USA only? No, you can go in from any country. I have men and women in there from all over the world. There's Oman, uh, India, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, the United States, Thailand, um, where else? A bunch of them. Yeah, they're from all over the place. Yeah. And, you know, if both people are willing to get to know each other online by distance until they can travel, that's fine. Um, I've tried to do that in the past, and it has not worked out for me, and that's why I decided not to do it anymore for myself, okay? Uh, sister, can you answer my question if it is okay for you? What is what okay for me? Oh, uh, do they allow you to work in a job with a hijab? Oh, yeah. You can work with a hijab in the United States, but not... How do I say this? You wouldn't be able to work with a niqab. You could wear a face mask. Um, or maybe a cloth over your face that didn't look like a niqab, but you would never be hired if you had a niqab on for a job interview. And on top of that, um, there's too much Islamophobia, too much fear and bias over women that wear face coverings or even really to be perfectly honest hijab in this country in most places i hate to say that and it's not anything against the american people uh what the people that have caused this are the people that are responsible for what's taught in schools and education they're the people that insist upon having no God in the schools and workplace. It's practically illegal to speak about God uh, in the schools or in any workplace, you know, unless it, it's a specific uh, religious company, business, or private school of that certain religion in this country. It's terrible. It causes um rifts between communities it causes ignorance it causes people to not know and understand and be comfortable with people of other religions religions and cultures in this country 
And where there's division and ignorance, there's fear and hate. And that's exactly what they've caused in this country towards Muslims and people of other faiths as well. Um, Oh, you guys, I'm I'm not going to do a two-way call in the um, Instagram right now because it's too hard to focus on two platforms. <laughs> I have YouTube camera running right now, too, okay? Sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, who are those people? Well, those people are... Going back in history, it was the Rockefellers. The Rockefellers designed the Board of Education for the, the United States of America. And so they dictated what was taught in schools and what wasn't. Um, actually, you know, I, I was not a Trump supporter and I'm still not, but at least Donald Trump was trying to put religion back in the schools. He was trying to sign a bill that um, helped people of faith be able to practice their religion within schools and be able to talk about it. Um, but he's not in office anymore. So that fell by the wayside, probably won't happen. Um, this, oh. Reliability is guaranteed. Oh, on that website? Uh, I can't guarantee anything in life. <laughs> and I don't have, I'm not the one that does any of the programming or payment things or anything like that on there. The only thing I do on that marriage website is try to update it and try to help people um, put their bios in there and everything, their photos in there. Uh, let's see. I thought you were Canadian. No, oh, I am. I have citizenship in Canada and the United States. Half of my family is Canadian and the other half is American. What about sending Quran lectures, which is very beautiful? Sometimes I do uh, Quran readings on here on YouTube. Sometimes I, uh, I do some lectures that are more Islamic uh, in nature, yeah. I did have 200 videos on my YouTube channel, and I did have some advertising on there. I took all the advertising off um, because I felt that YouTube was exploiting me for their own profit with those advertisements. And I also felt like they said I had control over the advertisements, but I didn't when I started to delete some of them. They grayed it out so that I couldn't delete it. Uh, I told them not to advertise Facebook uh, on my channel, and they did anyway. And um, they also don't pay. So they're making money off my videos, but I was only making $10 a month on my videos, and it wasn't worth it to me to have people bombarded by that propaganda and those awful constant commercials uh, if it wasn't going to benefit me to the point where it was helpful to my audience. Um, so I took them off. They're gone. Uh, and I took most of my um, live videos and things like that off of there. But I did leave quite a few playlists. And I, I left... Um, some of the better videos I thought that were on there. I might post the older ones again later, but I was just cleaning up my YouTube a little bit because it was, I think, kind of overwhelming for some people because there was so much. Because there was over 200 videos on there. Just a story. My mom got arrested in the USA as she was wearing a hijab, not a niqab. We went there for her eye treatment in John Hop Hopkins. That's why I asked. Yeah. So that's caused by a small group of people in power 
that have the ability to cause discord and ignorance and fear within, you know, mainstream public society by taking information away from the public, by um, censoring things so that people are only getting negative media about uh, Islam and they're not getting the full picture. Let me just give you an example here. So I have a Netflix account, you guys, um, and I don't really watch much TV or videos, but my kids do. So I keep this Netflix account open because I have three daughters and they're older. Um, my youngest one's 18. So they watch the videos and I thought, well, okay, I'm going to look for the movie Fatima, right? Uh, I don't know if you've heard of Fatima. She had an experience where she spoke to a messenger and the messenger gave her a message to give to the Pope in um, the Vatican. And to the Pope was supposed to give mankind this message in 1960. Yeah, it was 1960. And he didn't. And that was for over 40 years ago, right? So... I was going to watch the movie, Fatima, and I went to Netflix, and I thought, oh, I see some sisters on here. Uh, they are, they've started putting movies about Islam, and they've got shows about what it's like to be a sister in Islam. I was all excited. I thought, wow, this is really great, because now the American people can watch these shows and get a better idea of what it's like to actually be a Muslim woman, right? Wrong. I clicked on every single one of those and every single one was really bad stuff. All they showed was abusive men, women trying to escape and being miserable and tortured and abused. Uh, everyone was extremely poor and, you know, there were terrorist activities going on and I was just in shock, actually. I was really, really upset. And then I thought, you know, the reality is this, you guys. In the United States and Canada, we don't have much exposure to Islam or Muslim people. If you're not Muslim, you probably don't know any Muslims. And if you do, you've probably only seen them and said hello and you know nothing about their religion or their lives or the families or anything like that, right? So if you watch a movie like that, that's your vision of what it's like in Islam. And so the American people watching violent um, movies like that, they get afraid of Islam. They're afraid of Muslim people. They're afraid of hijabis, niqabis, right? Because that represents it. That's the picture they saw. They saw women wearing hijab and niqab in these movies where they were being, you know, abused or, you know, crying all the time or they didn't show any religion really unless it was associated with men with guns, right? That's what the American people are being fed. And that causes fear and hate and anger towards us as a religious sector, right? A religious nation in Islam. And so then when we're out as women in public in America dressed like this, we're in danger of having people hate us, be rude to us, put us in danger, and that causes fear and anxiety, too, right, for, for us as Muslims. It's not quite as hard for men because men don't really wear something that says, this is who I am out in public. You just look like a normal man. You're just wearing regular men's clothes. But when you're wearing this as a woman and you're out in the American public where they don't wear that and they don't know anything about Muslims, except all the bad stuff they've seen on Netflix, right? They're scared of it. 
And so we have this problem. And it's not caused by the American people. It's caused by the people who are in charge of the education, who are in charge of the media, and what the American people and the Canadian people are exposed to in that media. Because they're, they learn from media. We learn from media. We learn a lot of our stuff by watching TikTok, Facebook, all of those, right? YouTube. So if we get all of our information is scary, then we associate Islam as being scary, right? So in answer to your question, it's really hard to be a Muslim woman and practice your faith and dress Islamically in this country, for sure. Uh, Rasha says, oh my God, not allowed to talk about God even in Christianity. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. Depending on what area you're living in and where you are. Um, like if you're in a public school, then no, you're not allowed to wear crosses around your neck. You're not allowed to wear clothing that represents any type of religion or God. And you're not allowed to talk about it. You're not allowed to talk about God if you're a student. And you're not allowed to talk about God if you're a teacher. You'll get dismissed if you're a teacher and you talk about God. You'll lose your job. Unless you're working in a specifically Christian, privately funded uh, church school. Okay? I am running out of um, battery power, you guys. <laughs> so I'm going to have to log out in about two minutes. Uh, let's see. It's the respect of women to wear the niqab. I know. Yeah. And we shouldn't have to worry about it. We should be able to wear it and feel happy. And when I go to an Islamic country, that's exactly how I feel. I feel uh, respected. I feel happy. I feel comfortable. I feel safe. But I don't feel that way in my own country. Not as a Muslim woman, unfortunately. So pray for America and Canada, everybody, that that changes because it's not okay. Um, Rasha says, but the most great thing in Americans that they love searching and reading, so more convert to Islam, more they fight Islam, more reverts. Cheryl Lee says, we really appreciate your efforts, sister. We know it's tough for you. Inshallah, Allah will give you your rewards in the next life. May Allah bless you. You should someday visit Pakistan. Pakistan is a beautiful country from what I've seen, and I would love to visit there one day. That would be amazing. Hopefully, I will have that opportunity. Inshallah. To be honest, niqab is not an obligatory in Islam, right? Yeah, you're right. It's mostly cultural with the niqab. I like niqab. My ex-husband was Saudi, and that's how I got introduced to niqab. I always thought niqab was beautiful and provided me some extra privacy. I decided to continue using it on the Internet, mostly for privacy, but I also do like the look of it. It's nice. And I wear it as part of my uh, hijab, my whole Islamic outfit attire. Uh, Trump is fired. Yeah, Trump is fired. I, you know, I never supported Trump, but I, I don't support Biden either. And What's happening under Biden, I don't, I'm really unsure about it. It feels a little scary as well. And like I was saying before, at least Trump was trying to get religion back into the schools, which I thought was good. But, you know, there's corrupt government everywhere. And it's really unfortunate. 
Is somebody still trying to get into my... Okay. I'll try to let you into my chat, but I don't know if it's going to work out. I have to log out in a couple of minutes, you guys, because I'm running out of battery on my phone. Democrats are worse than Republicans. Oh, it's just the whole politics thing is hard. I know there's a lot of good people who label themselves as Republicans and label themselves as Democrats, but there are also some really bad ones. So that is a problem. I think you're specifically talking about your city. I lived in California, Washington, and Texas. Everyone wears what they want and pray inside public school. Okay, well... I came from Washington. I was born in California. I've never been to Texas other than the airport, but that was not my experience. I don't know where you were there, but it obviously wasn't in the same area I was in. <laughs> and like I said, you know, there are places in the United States and Canada that have pockets of Islamic communities, and you're okay in those little sectors. Um, I know Minnesota has an Islamic area of people, and Texas does too. Texas actually has a big Islamic community, and I'm pretty certain that if I visited an area like that, I wouldn't have a problem walking down the sidewalk or shopping wearing my hijab or niqab, but that's not the majority of the United States, or even Canada. The cop gives very beautiful feeling, really, I love it. Yeah, me too. I think it's good to have privacy as well. Yeah. Okay, guys, I better go. It's been over an hour, and I'm losing my battery power. I appreciate you all coming to support me. Um, if you want a spouse, please take a look at my marriage site, which is patreon.com slash muslima of the west. And you can find that link in my bio, the descriptions in my videos, and at the upper right hand corner of the page on my channel. I also have a small online shop where I sell women's Islamic clothing. So if you want to support me by buying a hijab or something like that for your mother <laughs> or your wife or yourself, um, you can visit my shop at etsy.com slash shop slash Muslima of the West. Or you can check my descriptions of my videos. It should be in there or at the top of my YouTube page. There's an icon on the upper right-hand side, okay? So I'll see you later, everyone. I love you all. May Allah bless you. Thank you for coming. as Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone.